It's now five days since Donald McKay disappeared. Thank the people of Australia. If you're old enough, think back 36 years. What were you doing in 1977? That's the year NASA's Voyagers 1 and 2 spacecraft headed on an epic tour of the solar system. I love telling people that they left Earth and just a couple of months after the premiere of the very first Star Wars movie, the good Star Wars movies. Well, remarkably, the Voyagers are still beaming back information. In fact, Voyager 1 is now the most distant human-made object. It's currently exploring the very edge of our solar system and will soon break free altogether, in fact, and move out into the very space between stars, the interstellar medium. Now, later on, we're going to be in the control room here at Tidbinbilla as the Voyager's messages are actually downloaded. But first, let's take a look at where these spacecraft have been so far. These twin spacecraft have told us just about everything we know about the giant planets of the outer solar system, and especially planets like Uranus and Neptune. And the outer planets were just the beginning. The biggest surprises came from their moons, which until then were little more than spots through our telescopes. There's all these little black spots orbiting us. They must be all the same. They must look like our moon. But when the Voyager got there, they said, holy cow, they have, each one is different. We have Io, the closest one, is tidally heating. It's got active volcanoes on it. And the surface is covered with sulfur. On Enceladus, there's an ocean. That water is warm. It's fizzy. It's carbonated. It has uh, organic molecules in it. There could even be life on these far out moons. I love these icy watery worlds because it shows that maybe the first way we'll find out whether there's life out there is by going fishing. Jupiter has a giant red spot, a storm wider than the Earth. Voyager 1 captured its remarkable motion. Our only close-up view of the most distant world, Neptune, came from Voyager 2. Turned out, Jupiter's not the only one with a spot. There's something similar on Neptune, it's called Scooter, and it's going, it's a tornado that goes around the planet. Voyager 1's last encounter with a planet was more than three decades ago. Since then, it's just been blasting through space at 16 kilometres a second. That's like travelling from here, at Tidbinbilla, to here, in our ABC Melbourne studios, in less than 40 seconds. That incredible speed has allowed Voyager 1 to travel a very long way. To get a feel for how far, consider the Mars rover, Curiosity. NASA's instructions to it take 20 minutes to get to Mars, even travelling at the speed of light. NASA's messages to Voyager take 17 hours, and another 17 hours for the reply to come back. Whenever we're talking to it, it's like an enormous game of throw and catch. We send out the signal one day, the Earth does a complete rotation and a bit more before we get the answer back again. So it's, it's way out there now. Indeed, it's more than 120 times further away from us than the sun is. From that vantage point, looking back our way would be an incredible sight. Out there, the sun would be the size of a star, although a strangely bright star, way brighter than the full moon. But while the sun is distant, the voyagers are still feeling its effects. They're buffeted by the solar wind, which pours out of the sun streaming past the planets. It's going at around 700 kilometres per second. Not per hour, but per second, rushing past the Earth. So if you're in a spacecraft orbiting the Earth and you lick your finger and stick it out the porthole, you'll feel that wind rushing past. That wind creates a giant bubble around our planetary system, the heliosphere. It protects us from the harshness of interstellar space. So it's a little like the sun has a nice harbour around it where the waves are nice and low and then there's this barrier, the breakwater, that prevents those big cosmic high energy waves from coming into our harbour. Those cosmic high energy waves are born in exploding stars, supernovae, and they are life destroying. But fortunately, the cosmic rays are charged particles, so they're pushed away by magnetic fields. Our heliosphere is full of magnetic field. Now, the thing about charged particles in a magnetic field is that they start going in spirals around the magnetic field. They spiral off in another direction, leaving the Earth safe. But the voyagers are set to punch through the protective bubble into the interstellar region. They'll give 
the first actual measurements from deep, deep space. This is something that we don't have in astronomy very often. You, know, <laughs> you, you can't exactly go to the Andromeda galaxy and, and take some measurements. In a rarely granted treat, we're in Tidbin Biller's control room and Voyager's messages are being downloaded now. This is the actual signal from the Voyager spacecraft, and you can see this tiny little peak yeah. in the centre here. All this other stuff is noise coming from the rest of the universe. That's fantastic. So, the, I mean, we're getting a signal from the very edge of the solar system. Yeah, and you've got to think about this signal is 20 billion times weaker than yeah. the power of a watch battery. So it, it's quite, <laughs> it's, it's no incredible. mean feat to be able to pick this up out of all that noise. Yeah, yeah. And Voyager 1's news is, it is starting to break through the protective heliosphere. It's beginning to feel the cosmic rays of interstellar space. The main thing that Voyager is seeing is the sharp increase in high energy cosmic rays and the sharp decrease of low energy solar wind particles. But the craft hasn't completely broken through yet. It's still feeling the sun's magnetic field. When we get into the magnetic field in the interstellar medium, the magnetic field will be in an altogether different direction. We'll recognise it as being a different magnetic field, and then we really will have escaped the solar system. And there's more to come after that. What is the future for the Voyagers? Well, remarkably, latest calculations are they could still be transmitting till 2025. So there's still a lot more good science that could be done. But after that, they'll fall silent and keep barrelling out into space for eternity. Well, the predictions are in about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will get within about 1.6 light years of a star called Gliese 445. Whether there's any sophisticated equipment out there to detect such a distant small object, I'm not sure. One of these but records just in case, there are messages on board carried on these records. It has greetings from Kurt Waldheim, who was the General Secretary of the United Nations at that time when they were launched in 1977. And welcome messages in 55 languages. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Shalom. Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Drastuite, privyetsuwa was. It also has a selection of images and music. I wonder what the aliens will make of the 70s disco. Ah!